Welcome to the top 10 pro specialist. At number 10, we have Adventure Time, number one. This is from 2012. Uh, copies ordered by retailers was about 2,500, or I'm sorry, 12,500. Cover A, there's 27.98 in the census. It doesn't come up very often on eBay. I talked to my kids about their favorite cartoon. Uh, when they were growing up, it was unanimous. They, they all loved Adventure Time. So I was just thinking down the future for a good hold. Long term, this would be something to pick up. There are a lot of covers for it, uh, five different covers. This is cover A pictured, uh, B and C are connecting covers, cover D is a virgin, and then cover E is a wraparound cover of B and C. Yeah, I remember buying the, the second print at Midtown for, for my kids, so uh, great pick. At number nine, we have Avengers 232. I won't go into the leak, but there has been a little information about a possible post credit scene starring this guy, Star Fox. This is not the first appearance of Star Fox. The first appearance of Star Fox is, in his original name, Eros, is Iron Man 55, which is also the first appearance of Drax and Thanos, and is probably out of reach for a lot of people. Uh, this book still checks the boxes, though. This is where he changes his name to Star Fox, which is how everyone knows him. Uh, this is when he joins the Avengers. It's a great feature cover. And this era of, uh, of Bronze Age books are not easy to get in high grade anymore, even if they might be plentiful. On CGC right now, there's 81 copies of this book total. There is a Canadian price variant. There are direct and newsstand. This is of that era where the, the direct should be a little bit more rare. And just compare that to that Iron Man 55. There's 4,613 copies of that on the census. So... Uh, I do think there's going to be a, a another iteration of the Avengers coming up between the current Avengers and the young Avengers, which will be down the road. Uh, so I think Star Fox is a good bet for that. Sounds like something to look forward to. At number eight, we have Life with Archie 41. This comic uh, has eluded me uh, for a couple years. Uh, it is the first appearance... Uh, in U.S. comics of Godzilla and Mothra. It, it might be a little controversial. It, it is on a movie screen. Kids are watching it. So it's not necessarily like, you know, Godzilla from the, the, the Toho version, but it, it is legendary for Godzilla collectors to seek out this this copy. There There is no, uh, you know, Comicron census on this book. It's too old. But on the CGC census, if anyone would like to guess how many there are, Graded currently in CGC, you deserve a gold watch if you get it right. There are three copies. Uh, one is a 9.4. Uh, that is the highest graded copy of this book. The next highest graded copy is a 5.5. The lowest and the last is a 3.5. These books are out there. Uh, a good friend of mine found a couple over the weekend. Uh, solidifying the fact that I'll never find a copy in Ohio. <laughs> so I believe the person who found that was the the Godzilla of comic book pickers, and the person who picked this at number seven, Mighty Thor number fifteen variant. Okay, so we have a variant from two thousand twelve. Uh, this is a one in twenty five, and um, I noticed. Honestly, anybody should have noticed if they've been on eBay, that there's been an uptick in the first in sales and first appearance of Silver Sable. And there, honestly, there's just not a lot of like Silver Sable collectible comics that you can really sink your teeth into. I, I think this one is perfect. Um, Marvel kind of has that habit of sticking characters on books that on variants that they don't necessarily have anything to do with the issue, but the artwork from John Tyler Christopher, Earl, nice John Tyler Christopher from nine years ago. This this is this is just too undeniable to pass up. And on top of that, this book is plentiful at uh, twenty five dollars. So you're basically playing, paying ratio. You're basically paying what you would have paid back in two thousand twelve. So this is an excellent, excellent collectible, especially if you're a Silver Stable fan. Also, it has Spidey, of course, and the Black Cat. 
what I also like about this for a really potential upside kicker, and now this is a big outside one, didn't Sony announce that there was going to be a Black Cat Silver Sable movie? I mean, if that happens, right, th this book will will hit another gear. So, mm -hmm. Carter, good pick. So we go from the black and the silver to glow in the dark. At number six, Ghost Rider 15, Newsstand. This was really the beginning of the gimmick covers from the 1990s, right? Uh, I think it's hard to deny uh, any of us who were collecting at that point that this cover isn't iconic. Uh, it was the very first glow in the dark cover. And uh, if you haven't seen it in the dark, take a look. It's actually pretty stunning. 90s nostalgia collectors begin to um, look at uh, iconic iconic books from that era. I think that they're going to gravitate towards this newsstand edition. Um, it was fairly heavily printed, like a lot of books in this era, but the newsstand really cut way, way back uh, on that from a rarity standpoint. Additionally, this book is a son of a gun uh, in high grade, given, uh, given the black cover. Uh, it picked up ticks. Uh, pretty easily. So, you know, I can see this one going future um, for a very nice premium, you know, at a, at a 9.8. So you can grab these right now, anywhere from 15 to 25 bucks. I grab them if you see them. I, I think this has a lot of legs and a lot of room to run. So we'll go from gimmick to a literary gold standard. At number five, we've got Watchmen number one. So when you think Alan Moore, what, what titles come to mind? I always think of Swamp Thing, Batman the Killing Joke, and The Watchmen. Alan Moore is like is responsible for how modern comics are written today. Uh, you know, this is an iconic cover that's been swiped by Spawn, Venom, and the prices right now are just crazy low to me. Uh, you can pick up raw copies for forty to fifty bucks. The last nine eight. CGC 9.8 sold for $800. So I feel like it's one of those, as more people come into the market, more people will start buying books they're familiar with. So Watchmen being one of those books, the market will start drying up eventually. I mean, I think this is one of the most important comics written, period, right? Should be a cornerstone of anybody's collection. Number four, we have Avengers Endgame Prelude number two. All right, so this is uh, Mighty Mel V's pick. Um, oh. For those who aren't aware, because these books were not highly ordered at all by retailers, these Marvel Prelude books really recapped what happened in the MCU films prior to this this movie being released. So this was really what led up Im immediately to, to Endgame. What is really interesting about this book is that we get the first appearance of Bucky as the White Wolf. So this pick is bound to be controversial, but um, it's a scene from the end of Infinity War. And really the only time we get to see Bucky as that character in comics. What I will say about these is that because they weren't widely respected, uh, they were stuck in back issue bins. They are all looked like this with sort of the half or the two thirds black cover. And they were super underordered. And by underordered, I mean, you know, somewhere between 10 and 12,000 generally for each one of these issues. So there aren't a ton of them out there. I, I really like all of these books, frankly, from, from the beginning through the end of the run of these prelude stories. And um, I, I think there's a lot of really uh, gold to be mined in these particular comics. So we'll go from the Avengers to the X Men. At number three, we've got. Uncanny X-Men 282, the second print. I, I got some faith in this with all the the strong backing from all the other second prints coming, uh, especially, I think, 361. I think it's got a strong following. A CGC census in this compared to the first print is super low. 2298s of the second print in oh. CGC 98 versus almost 1,000, 978 of the first print. It's had a strong uptick as of late with no announcements. So if something does happen, uh, expect to get priced out, the market to follow the second print and uh, rinse, wash, repeat. The only thing that could have made this better was if it came with a Bishop rookie card. At number two, we've got Hawkeye number one hip hop variant. All right. Uh, it's no mystery. Uh, Kate Bishop is coming later this year. Um, Haley Steinfeld. I mean, she looks 
like perfect casting. This is one of the very best hip hop covers in my in my opinion. This was a qualifier, um, like almost all of the hip hop covers. Retailers needed to order 125% of what they ordered for All New Wolverine number 12. All New Wolverine 12, number 12 had about 36,000 copies ordered. This uh, number one All In had about 70. So I'm really limiting the number of, of this particular version that's out there. You know, Kate Bishop has a number of really cool coverage in, in, in her first solo series. But uh, for my money, um, you know, this is really the best pick out there. And, and one I could see people gravitating towards when she hits the big screen because, you know, I'm, I'm just about certain she's going to be a hit. At number one, we've got Monsters Unleashed, number four variant. Okay, so this is a 1 in 25 uh, by Ji Hung Lee. This is part of a, a connecting cover set from one to five. But in my opinion, this has to be the standout. I noticed that uh, a lot of the Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur covers, just in general, throughout, you know, from the series, are very hot, are very, are relatively expensive. And this one should be no exception. This is a terrific pick. I believe that there are around 1,300 copies of this variant floating around. So um, I, I would jump on this before I jump on any of the other Monsters Unleashed, Unleashed uh, issues. All right, great, great analysis. And we'll see you all next week for the next top 10. In the meantime, check us out on the flip side. <laughs>